Um, R1 objective three, this is the union and intersection of sets. There's going to be some new symbols. I don't know if you, like I said, I don't know if you've done union and intersection before. Don't know. Um, so you're going to have some new symbols that we got to get used to. Then we're going to go through a couple examples and then that's it. You're good to go. Okay. So <coughs> the union of two sets, should we, should we turn the lights off? Okay. The union of two sets contains all the elements in either or both sets. This is like an or. Bless you. This bless you. Go for three. This is this is like an or statement. One or the other or both. And we talked about ors when we did chapter four in statistics. And the first new symbol that you're going to see is this. I'll make this bigger. That is the symbol for union. So this means the union of A and B. Then the intersection of two sets contains only the elements that are in both sets. So this would be like your and. It has to be in A and also in B. And the symbol for that is just that union symbol upside down. Okay. So we've got Union, we've got intersection. And the way you want to think about this, this is like an or, this is like an and. Here is a visual representation of that. On the left, we have a union. I would take a picture of this. Don't try to write all this down. A union is both of them, all of it together, the union. Okay. The intersection is where they both have to happen. So, and, where A and B happen. This is A or B. This is A and B. That's the difference. Any questions so far? Let's do some examples. Okay. Uh, if you want to take a picture of this, please do. So we are given three sets, all in roster notation. Bless you. A, B, and C. A is the set negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1. B is the set negative 5, 0, 5. And C is the set negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. So we have three problems that we are doing. The first one is finding the intersection of A and B. So elements that are both in A and B, that's what the, the, the union is. It's an and, A and B. The union of A and B, that just means all of it combined together. And then the intersection of A and C. So what's in A and C? So go ahead and try to write those out. You're, you're going to write a set with those numbers. Give those three a shot, and let's just see if you get it. All right, let's look at... This first one, intersection of A and B. All that's saying is what are the elements that are both in A and also in B? Are there any elements that are in A and also in B? Which one? Negative 5, anything else? Okay, so, yeah, I have a negative 5 here. I have a negative 5, what they have in common. So my solution for the intersection of A and B is negative 5. Raise your hand if you had that right. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Now, uh, one question that you might have for B, the union, it's just both of them combined together. Did any of you write negative 5 down twice? What do you think? Should you write it down twice or once? Twice. If it's in the set, is it in the set? Yes, it is. It is. So therefore, how many times should you write it down? Once. once. There's only one negative 5. 
So you should only have one negative five in there. So, right, you do not need two negative five. And one of the things that you should get in the habit of in case you didn't do this, set notation is always from smallest to biggest and we don't repeat. If you remember when we went through domain and range back in algebra two, that was one of our little rules. Smallest to biggest, don't repeat elements of a set, okay? And there's no need to, because negative five's here. Why write it down again, okay? All right, how many had that one right? And even if you wrote it down twice, I'll, I'll count it for this one, okay? Uh, C, the intersection of A and C. What, are, what elements are both in A and in C? None of them. Okay, so there's two ways that we can write no intersection. There's nothing there. Okay, there's two ways that we can write that. And I want you to know both. This is literally an empty set. It's a set with nothing in it. This also means empty set or no solution. So no either one, no both. You might see either one on a quiz or test. And... Uh, I want you to know what those are, okay? Questions on any of those three? I feel pretty good about that, raise your hand. All right, good. Uh, let's make it a little tougher. So some of the problems that you're gonna have to do in your homework are gonna deal with inequalities and intervals. And you're gonna have to do this for them. And so I think it's helpful to kind of think of a visual. So here's an example, this is straight from your book, but. Um, if you want to take a picture of that to put it in your notes, great. We're going to go through two examples here. If you were to actually screenshot this from your book, there's another set here, F, and there's two more problems, but um, we, don't, we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, and, and because the problem is in set notation, sometimes the problem will ask you to express your answer in interval notation. Sometimes it'll ask you to express your answer in set notation. To be honest with you, um, I'm not gonna show you either because you know how to do that. I'm just gonna show you how to visually work through these problems. And you may want to write this out the way I'm gonna show you. You don't necessarily have to. If you can picture it in your head without writing it down, that's okay. Um, but I think it's going to be helpful for you to write it out and draw a little sketch. It doesn't have to be anything pretty or perfect. But for this particular problem, we have D is the set of X less than 4, and E is the set of X greater than or equal to negative 2. So what I'm going to do is just put a, the graphs up for those so that we can find the intersection, find the union. So here's what the graph looks like. That's gonna be the graph period for this problem. Whether I'm finding the intersection or I'm finding the union, it's gonna look like that. And notice we didn't, you know, it's not a very sophisticated number line or anything like that. So the question for, for you is, for this first one, the intersection. Where, if I combine these two together, where, do they intersect? What's the, what's the lowest number where they intersect? Negative two. Okay, so if I look at it this way, the lowest number that they intersect is there. What's the highest number where they intersect? Four. So they intersect. If I was to, if I was to bring those two graphs together, you would see that they intersect in there. So I just have to, you can kind of merge them together and this would be the intersection, okay? So if I brought those together, that's what I'd get. I'd have a bracket at negative two, I'd have a parenthesis at four. You could write this in interval notation, you could write this in set notation, but that is where those particular inequalities intersect, where they both occur, okay? So, Again, depending on what the directions in the book would say, you would write this either in interval notation or set notation from there, and, um, and then you'd be done with that one. Okay, now the union is both of them together. So it's 
and we still have this graph. It's this or this or both. So if I put if I put them both together and I could be either so I'm going to put this these lines back up. Okay? So it could be here or here or here. So if it could be in any of those three places, what is, when I merge them together, what kind of result will I get? If it can be in any of them. Say it again. All real numbers. It would be the entire number line. Okay, when I merge them together. So we could write the set of all real numbers in set notation. We could write that in interval notation from negative infinity to infinity depending on what the problem asks for, if it wants it in interval notation or set notation, okay? Any questions about that? I believe if you do problems like this, if you draw a quick little sketch, it's gonna be so much easier to see what's going on. Um, sometimes, some of the problems you're gonna do, bless you, the, the, the lines will actually be going in the same direction, and that's when those problems will get even trickier, okay? Uh, and that's all I'm going to tell you about that.